So I was originally going to do like this video where I just kind of ramble and do my makeup and then I was going to do like my drama video but then I realized I'm not going to be like as hyped up for that drama video as I am right now. I have to like kind of do it now. I was hella hyped for it like last night but I wasn't going to like shout at a camera at 11pm. Where the fuck is my primer? Some of y'all might be wondering why I'm doing like an update on Olivia Duffin, like what's been said has been said, what's been done has been done. There's been more that has been said, there has been more that has been done. She's not sorry, like she is not sorry. There's also going to be like a lot more like smaller drama stories. What? So basically Olivia Duffin is in like this little TikTok squad with like a couple of her then friends. So the friend that she had kissed in the TikTok after the whole leaking screenshots thing happened um she came out and basically just kind of said that olivia duffin is a piece of shit she made some tiktoks on her her name is lily rose and she is bisexual and she didn't really know what was going on at the time so i'm bisexual so what it's a thing and it's real i mean <laughs> it's called lgbtq for a reason there's a b in there and it doesn't mean badass wanna fuck did i just say that oh my god I feel stupid. Am I slay? I think I need to stop drinking. Wait. And another person in the squad called Monty Keats, I'm not quite sure, but he also made a TikTok speaking out about it. The squad are upset about is what happened in the group chat yesterday. We spoke to Liv and we asked her if she like realized that what she did was wrong. And he posted screenshots in the TikTok. And she just said that her boyfriend shouldn't have lied to her from the start still again. So we're back to it. She thinks her boyfriend was lying to her. I already said sorry about it. Lily Rose said that she was upset and L Olivia said that she was allowed to be upset. Lily Rose was like, do you care? No. You only care because you've been called out. She said, cool. I shouldn't have lied to me from the start. I shouldn't have said what I said. So she keeps on going on about her ex-boyfriend Liam was lying to her. This is because Liv can't acknowledge bisexuality. She doesn't see that as a potential thing for some reason. Bisexuals do exist. Don't be silly. We as a squad tried to be there for Liv. We supported her through all of it, right? But it was getting to the point where we were looking like we were condoning her behaviour. And when she's doing it right in front of our eyes, we're not going to let it happen. And I'm seeing people get involved who were in the squad that aren't in the squad anymore or are completely not in the squad at all. We've never kicked anyone out of the squad. People have left the squad on their own accord or based on their own actions, they decided that it would be a good idea to leave. We're not going to get into that. The squad as a whole don't want to associate with Liv because we're nice people. Or at least I feel that way. The squad feels that way. So if you don't feel that way, that's fine. And then Olivia did like this ranting thing. And she basically just said that everyone was showing their true colours this year. And y'all be kissing ass to keep friends, not me. Fuck y'all. Just basically, again, acting the victim and being a complete bitch. Lily responded to that on her story saying, at least we don't fake kiss our bi friends to look less biphobic. Olivia also continued to post her fans' stories, basically backing her up, being like, stop hating on her, stop, like, she just made a mistake, like, how is this a mistake? This is not an apology, she's not sorry. If you make a mistake, you apologize for it, sincerely, especially when it is something this serious, and she didn't do that, she doesn't give a fuck. And she keeps acting the victim. She's not the victim. She fucked up and she refuses to act like she's done anything wrong. So clearly she doesn't think that what she does is problematic in any way. So clearly she believes what she said. Bi people don't exist in her eyes. Her apology was shit to begin with. Then she deleted it and people were like, it's because she was getting hate. No, it was because she didn't give a fuck. And then she did like this whole story about like fucking fake friends. They're calling you out on her because you are a dickhead and they're trying to make you a better person. And you're out here just talking utter shit about them when they are trying to help you. I'm getting a lot of hate right now because I've touched down on the whole topic with Olivia and apparently I'm a bad person and I'm horrible. Um, I don't really care what people think about me. Um, at the end of the day, I'm really sick of Liv playing the victim and acting like she's done nothing wrong. Um, there are so many bisexual people who are probably upset and hurt by the screenshots, but it's all about Liv, right? No, wrong. I'm here speaking on behalf of all the bisexuals who can't say anything. I'm here to speak for them, for the bisexuals, even though we apparently don't exist. And people are hating on like Lily Rose for posting those TikToks about Olivia and all that. Like maybe she wouldn't make those videos if Olivia didn't fuck up and refuse to apologize. Maybe she wouldn't be making those videos if Olivia wasn't biphobic. Lily also posted on her story, I just want to clarify that none of the squad are bullying Olivia. The situation was already public, her ex posted the screenshots, it was posted on YouTube. That was nothing to do with us, we don't support what Liv said, that's understandable. We all tried being there for Liv, there's no need for people to start dragging our name when we've done nothing wrong. Again, her fa- like, Olivia Duffin's fans are just 
they're dumb. Like, honestly, they're dumb. You can say, like, like, it pisses me off that she still has a large following. Like, what the actual fuck? Like, she is not a good person. She is a terrible human being. And then another member of the TikTok squad posted a video on her as well. Explains how she had blocked everyone and how she basically used Lily Rose to get people to believe that she wasn't biphobic by kissing her. Oh, oh. Literally just went to go and see her video. Ah, she blocked me. All her friends were supporting her. They were like, you're in the wrong. Everybody makes mistakes. After the screenshots got released, she was like, I don't want to be in a scandal. So do you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to drag one of my best friends, who's a girl, and I'm just going to be like, let's kiss. And of course, Lily, being the lovely person she is, doesn't really understand. It's in the wrong. She was just trying to help her friend out. And I feel sorry for Lily. But now Olivia Duffin has manipulated one of her best friends into basically trying to drag her into a scandal, which is just not what you want to do. Olivia Duffin has now blocked all of her gay and bi friends and I don't really know why. Like her friends that have supported her and helped her through so much, she's just acted like they're not even there and just blocked everyone. I'm included, but it's fine. We move. She's just gone back to making normal videos. How? And he explains how Olivia had been ranting to the people in the squad about how she hadn't done anything wrong. She had, but okay. But then the same people were trying to help her out in this situation. She just doesn't want to listen to them. She then rants to them and she's like, why am I getting hate? I've done nothing wrong. So then everyone's like, well, you have done something wrong. And she's talking in the group chat. She just doesn't get where she's gone wrong. That is why it's weird. She's like, I'm innocent. Why is everyone hating on me? It's like, mm, you're not. So she's gotten worse. She doesn't give a fuck. She's still playing the victim, thinking that she like she genuinely thinks that she's innocent and that she hasn't done anything wrong so clearly she still doesn't give a fuck about the lgbtq community she should not be going to pride so yeah just like to tell everyone who is still supporting Liv that they are a clown and that they are homophobic and therefore immoral and disgusting people i don't give a fuck if you think you're gonna get aids i don't give a fuck if you think that being attracted to more than one gender is being a slut i don't give a fuck what you think because you are a terrible person olivia duffin clearly doesn't care and anyone who bought into her apology was an idiot in the first place because that was a shitty apology where she literally said nothing but I was a good girlfriend, I was getting hate, I was the victim, I did nothing wrong, he was the one who was lying to me. So if you believed her apology, like that's on you. Okay, some other YouTube related news. Keemstar, he released a makeup palette as a joke, kind of as a meme about how everyone's releasing palettes and they're all shitty and going wrong. And people bought it and there were problems with it, like people weren't getting the palettes like well after they had ordered them. I don't think they were getting emails about it either. I'm not really quite sure. But then he came out and said it was a pre-order obviously because he didn't expect people to pay for them and then like actually want to receive them. So he came out and pretended it was a pre-order all along as if they were supposed to know that. He never said it was a pre-order before this but eventually he got them in stock. He got them very quite recently maybe yesterday or a couple days ago. So yeah the palettes are now here. The palettes are now still as boring as they were when they came out and just like another thing i want to talk about regarding keemstar is his involvement with jesse smiles and curtis laporte and all that he has been very vocal about not believing jesse jesse smiles had posted like a tweet about everything that had happened keemstar tweeted out saying i hate cases of rape in most cases only two people in the world actually know what happened everyone else has to guess the jesse smiles and curtis story is so hard to believe because they were boyfriend and girlfriend the truth is none of us actually know what happened which before I get on to Jesse's reply, I just want to focus on something that he said. It is hard to believe because they were boyfriend and girlfriend. You know that most cases of sexual assault and rape happens between people that like are close to you? You are more likely to be raped or sexual sexually assaulted by somebody that you trust and are close to than like a complete fucking stranger. And boyfriends are no exception to that. Just because they were dating doesn't mean that he didn't rape her. It is unbelievable. I am in high school and I know several of my friends who have had cases similar to this. The majority of them were dating the guys that they had been sexually assaulted or raped by. I am in high school. High school girls have to deal with this and you think that it's such a hard thing to believe, like it's uncommon or something? I had read somewhere that somewhere in the US, I'm not quite sure where, but one in every three women there 
has experienced rape or sexual assault. That is how common it is. Jesse Smiles replied saying, you have handled the situation with such poor taste. You're right, you don't know what happened, but you've sure felt like all these years when you constantly called me a liar and mocked my accusations. Sorry if you hate all these rape cases, by the way, must be hard on you. He is just such a shitty person and what happened is that Curtis Lepore did his own tweet on like his side of the story and then Keemstar immediately jumped like, oh my god, you should have said this from the start. Like, I see what happened now. Like, I totally believe you. Like, you are disgusting. Keemstar is disgusting. I've made a video on him before. Like, if you want to watch that, watch that. I don't know how good it is. I don't remember what I said in it. It was probably a really bad video. But he is a disgusting human being. Why he didn't believe it in the first place, I'm not quite sure about. And it doesn't fucking matter. But the way he responded because he doesn't believe it. And he refused to believe Jesse throughout this entire time. But as soon as Curtis says, like, one fucking thing. It's like, oh my god, you're, like, so right. Oh my god, preach. What a queen. Like, no, you are a terrible fucking person. Like, at this point, it doesn't matter whether or not it happened. Like, I do believe Jesse, but that's like not relevant as much like you don't say that to a potential survivor of sexual assault you don't constantly shame them for saying that they have been sexually assaulted until there has been hardcore evidence that they had made up these accusations you don't say that shit this has been going on for so long in october of 2014 Kimstar tweeted out saying do you remember when jesse smiles accused curtis laporte of rape guess what charges dropped same thing will happen with sam pepper watch jesse smiles said Charges were never dropped, but you also spelled guess wrong, so I assume we can't expect too much from you. Keemstar says, sorry, Jesse Smiles, Twitter only has 140 spots. Please don't accuse me of rape. I don't know what kind of audience that is supposed to be funny to, but that is disgusting. And, like, another problem that comes out of this is him being so open about how much he doesn't believe Jesse, even though there's no evidence against Jesse, is that it... It's like kind of validates sexual assaulters and rapists in a way. Like you make jokes like this and you say stuff like this. The people who are hearing it are either going to be survivors, the rapists, or people that like aren't affected by it as much. Saying stuff like that would take the survivors to such a bad place. It reminds them of what had happened and it brings up such a vivid picture in their mind of a situation that they never want to be reminded of again. And then you have the rapists. You say stuff like that and the rapist is then validated because they know that there are people out there, especially somebody with such a big following and such big influence. They know that there are people who can, it's like, I can do whatever the fuck I want. And then this guy with a really big following can just say that didn't happen and that he has proof that it didn't happen. But in actuality, he just doesn't believe that it happened. In his mind, he's like, oh, he has no problem with rape. He thinks that this is something that should be normalized. So how does it make you feel that a rapist likes you because of your approach to rape cases? How does it feel that a rapist relates to you? And I just want more people to be angry about this because this is absolutely disgusting. The next thing I want to talk about, which is also pretty serious, is Sabrina Carpenter. She was in Tall Girl. She played the sister of the main character. And the love interest of the t main character was, I think his name is like Griffin something, I'm not quite sure. But um, Sabrina Carpenter and Griffin, I'm going to call him Griffin, I'm pretty sure his name is Griffin. Sabrina Carpenter and Griffin started dating. He has been proved to have very homophobic, transphobic, just overall queerphobic, as well as racist and sexist beliefs. And she tweeted out about the situation because people were calling her out on it like your boyfriend's a piece of shit. And she said, I don't condone nor am I responsible for any other's previous actions. I'm only responsible for my actions. I'm sorry to whoever has been offended by my perceived lack of reassurance on what I believe. I hope you would know by now. Which that doesn't clear up anything. Like you're still romantically involved with somebody who is racist, sexist, homophobic, and transphobic. Like, if you genuinely didn't believe those things, if you genuinely believed that gay and trans and people of colour and women should have rights, then, like, I don't understand how you could be with somebody who, like, opposes that so much. But obviously, like, I feel like there hasn't been enough calling out on Griffin's part. Like, everyone's kind of been targeting Sabrina in the situation, but I feel like 
this uh, yeah like yeah she's dating him and she's a terrible person for dating him but like she wasn't the one who liked all those posts she wasn't the one who believed in all those things um griffin has since then unfollowed the account that made most of the posts that he had liked but he hasn't spoken up about anything so i don't know if he's avoiding it or if he like genuinely believes i i do think because i mean like this was like recent as well it's not like he liked them 10 years ago okay trisha paytas oh my god this video has a lot in it um she basically has a patreon where with like a lot of tears i mean like everything from 500 dollars and up you get an instagram shout out if you buy it a fan purchased that tear didn't get the instagram shout out basically was asking what had happened and made a video about it. Her sister replied being like, it wasn't Trisha's fault, it was my fault, here's your $500. And then all was well, all was good. But then Trisha Paytas copyright striked two of her videos. If she has two copyright strikes from Trisha Paytas, that means within the next three months, if she gets another copyright strike, her channel will be permanently terminated. So she was trying to figure out what the fuck was going on. And then Trisha Paytas copyright striked another video that she had already removed. Because obviously after she got a copyright strike from Trisha Paytas, she would like start removing her from all her videos. She had like a playlist about Trisha Paytas and all those videos were deleted. Then people tried to like call her out on it. And she basically said, there are people that, you know, keep on hating on me. And that content was not creative at all. It was just 10 minutes of stolen footage. First of all, people hating on you, she wasn't, but people hating on you is not an excuse to copyright strike their video if you do not have the right to copyright strike them. That is not what you do in that situation. Then she said it was like not creative. It was just stolen fo footage from her videos. And first of all, it's a compilation. So it's not just taking your video and just re-uploading it. She put in little clips of different vi parts of different videos to make a compilation that others might find entertaining or funny. That is not what they would get if they went onto one of your videos. I also don't think you have the right to give somebody shit about the creativity of their videos when your videos are literally crying on a kitchen floor. Also, it doesn't matter whether or not you think it is creative. It is YouTube. You can post whatever the fuck you want as long as it is fair use. I don't know what's been happening because this is this has been a while. And after your third copyright strike, you have like a week to solve it with that person before your channel gets terminated. I'm pretty sure it has been a week and I don't know what has happened. I doubt she got her channel back because fucking Trisha Paytas ass. Another thing with Trisha Paytas, she has been getting involved with the whole Nikocado, Avocado and Stephanie Sue situation. Stephanie So, Stephanie, I don't know how to say her last name, but you want to watch that video, you can watch it basically stephanie so uploaded a video about nikocado avocado and about the bad experiences she had and how he was just abusive and manipulative and emotionally just not the best person for her and how he had just treated her shit throughout their entire friendship now trisha paytas obviously tried to get views from something as sensitive as abuse and manipulation and made a video where she pretended to have knowledge on it and then just spent 10 minutes talking about anything but that. So yeah, there was getting profit off of abuse and manipulation and then just not saying anything about it. She's also recently started dating John Hill, which is something. John Hill is Jacqueline Hill's ex-husband and he has a tendency to go for people that could get him a bigger name. And obviously Trisha Paytas is very dedicated to getting views. So that's fun. David Dobrik, obviously he's a very big YouTuber, a lot of people really like him. However, sometimes people are stupid and they think a good way to show that love is by showing up at his house. And this happened, obviously this happened with like James Charles and like other people, but basically what happened with the James Charles situation is he spoke up about it saying, don't come to my house, that is disrespectful, it isn't respecting my privacy and it's just not cool, it's not, wow, what a good fan, it's no, what a creepy bitch. And then everyone was like, oh my god, you're you ungrateful cunt like we're fans we're supporting you we're coming to your house to support you like first of all support him online cunt don't show up to his house uninvited he doesn't know you he doesn't want you there you don't know what he could be doing he could be trying to have some private time it's just so gross and so creepy and just not right for you to do something like that and david dobrik spoke up about this multiple times on podcasts and stuff like that he tweeted about it and people still show up to his house and it is gross and it's disgusting it is not a cool little fan thing to do. No, gross, gross. 
And at this point, his neighbors are asking him to move. Like, his neighbors want him to move out because his fans have been climbing over his fence to, like, get to his house. And obviously, his neighbors are going to feel uncomfortable. He's obviously feeling uncomfortable because people are showing up uninvited to his fucking house. And I just don't see how a fan doesn't realize how gross and how much of a negative impact that has. Like, if you truly, like, loved him as a creator so much, why would you put him in a situation where he is forced to move out of a house that he clearly loves? Gabby Hanna. So... He had, what, why did I say that? She had tweeted, it was from 2011, and she tweeted out, a new study just uncovered that the number one cause of necrophilia is sexy children. And then people were like disturbed by that and called her out on it, like what the fuck. She tweeted out saying that her humor in 2011 was different to her humor now and that she just found different things funny and that, you know, now because she's 28, she doesn't think that's what she finds funny anymore. And also that joke was stolen because she finally admitted to stealing jokes. And then she um, got like more exposed because there were also tweets from 2012 where she says similar things saying, when the person you're with slash dating slash hooking up with is so immature you feel like a pedophile. Wouldn't it be awesome if two pedophiles pretended to be 13 year old kids online and met each other instead? When a senior in high school hits on you and he's so hot you actually want to say hell yeah hashtag pedophilia hashtag cougar. Now I hate Gabby Hanna but it is just like it, I get it it's like a very not good joke it's not very it's not a very respectful joke but it is it is at the end of the day a joke that she thought was funny nine years ago the only problem i have with it is that she addressed this but she refuses to address her involvement with curtis lepore she refuses to address her manipulative behavior she refuses to talk about her involvement with trying to sabotage trisha paytas and jason nash's relationship there's just a lot that she should have spoken up about and then this is what she does okay emma chamberlain this one isn't as like important but she has been selling coffee and it's pretty like expensive it's essentially two dollars a bag she sells them in packs of like five and it's like ten bucks and people are just saying like why would we buy coffee to make at home if it's that expensive especially like, with shipping it's ba we should basically just like go out and get coffee out from like a cafe and like she's obviously had a history with like expensive merch and selling expensive products and all that kind of stuff and she always does successful like she always successfully sells a good number of her products now obviously it's like not good like people like want to buy affordable coffee but at the same time if you want to buy affordable coffee buy affordable coffee people will complain about Emma Chamberlain but then buy her shit so at the end of the day like it's, it's still coffee like just get other coffee just like how her blurred clothing like that was very basic just get it somewhere else if you don't support her having such high prices then don't support her by buying those products now tana mojo um creator of the year we all have complained about that and then jake paul talked about it on the impulsive podcast saying like no mr beast should have won when he was asked about it and then everyone's like oh my god you're supposed to be a husband what the fuck you're so toxic yeah he is but just because you're somebody's husband doesn't mean you have to like say that they deserve a bunch of shit that they don't. Like, he was right, Mr. Beef should have won. I mean, yeah, understandably, Tanamojo could be upset because obviously that on top of all the toxicity that he's already put into her life is just, a, it's a lot. But just be, like, you, you can be somebody's husband and realize that they don't deserve an award that they got. Like, you can be happy for them and still recognize that they don't deserve it. Like, everyone knows that Mr. Beast should have won. That is the most obvious thing. Tana Mojo has barely been a creator this year. It is so obvious. And he was just saying what everyone else is saying. And that makes him a bad person because he's her husband. Like, but another thing about Tana Mojo, she made a video on her YouTube channel about, like, everything that had happened in 2019. And just, you know, her mental health and the toxicity of having Jake in her life. She said that it doesn't mean that, like, you know, they're breaking up or that they're through. It just means that she realizes that he isn't good for her. Which I feel like is such, just not good. Like, obviously this stems from, like, a deeper problem. It's not just, like, she's staying in the relationship because it's, like, fun. Like, no, she's, like, there's obviously a deeper rooted problem. And I still think she, that she should stop trying to solve that problem by looking for love that she's not gonna get from somebody that she shouldn't get it from. So I feel like if she recognizes the toxicity of, you know, having Jake in her life, she should probably like break it off with Jake, but I guess, I don't know, clout is clout, I guess. So yeah, that's all we have for today. Keemstar, trash. Nicole Duffin, absolute trash. Sabrina Carpenter, 
Stupid. Trisha Paytas, trash. David Dobrik, leave him alone. Gabby Hanna, trash. Hannah Mojo, going through a lot. I don't have an outro.